This instructional companion on rigid body kinematics falls under the major topic dynamics and vibrations which contains the following five chapters. Properties of solid bodies, kinematics, which is where this is going to come from obviously, kinetics, mechanisms and power transmission systems, and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinematics covers a great many pro uh, pro particular topics. Particles versus rigid bodies, which we're going to talk about here. Coordinate systems, distance and speed, uniform motion and acceleration, linear acceleration, big topic uh, projectile motion, uh, Norman Coriolis acceleration, uh, polar coordinates, relative motion, which we're going to discuss here, uh, general plane motion, again, what we're going to be discussing here, instantaneous centers, slider rods, and slider crank assemblies. Kinematics is uh, the geometry of motion. That's its definition. Actually, nice FE question, what that's about. And in, and in fact, it's broken up into two uh, very large areas, uh, particle and uh, rigid body. And particle is sort of what you cover first in a dynamics class and pretty much is restricted to the FE. Uh, whereas rigid body is more uh, for the PE, although you could have some rigid body, simple rigid body in the FE. Okay, but this is, this, these are the two big uh, divisions within kinematics. The main principle is that all motion, whether it's 3D general, and you're not going to have that on the PE, uh, or 2D plane motion, which is really the subject or the beginning of several instructional companions that we'll be talking about, plane 2D motion, uh, can be separated into a pure translation plus a pure rotation in either order. And that's the way we need to sometimes think about it. Of course, motion is happens simultaneously, but in order to analyze it, this is the way we can, we can go about it. Now, what we need is a little sort of a demonstration. Well, what I have here is uh, a triangle with a little uh, thick washer that I put a little mark on. And if we just, this is a great example of 2D play motion, if we just roll this along the paper, okay, I've got a little white mark on there, and we roll all the way down, let's say, to that point where we've got the marker to the left here, uh, that was j uh, pure plane motion, and both translation and rotation happened at the same time. But what we can think of it as, and we'll do this uh, in our equation form, is we can think of, if we looked at a pure translation first, then we could say, well, I can just move it to here, and then that's our translation, and then do our rotation, and we get the same result. You can do the reverse. You can come here, start and do your pure rotation, come all the way around, where the white marks to the left, that's the rotation part, and then translate it to there. So again, we, we attack these problems, these kinematic uh, uh, principles, uh, by looking at these two pieces separately. Now let's put this in equation form. OK, going to the next slide here. If A and B are two points on the same rigid body, we're not talking about relative motion, particle relative motion, where you have two separate particles doing their, their thing. The equation looks exactly the same, but uh, we're looking at two points on the same rigid body. This is rigid body kinematics. Then the following vector equation, and this is what's important, is if this is a vector equation, is that what this says is the velocity of B equals the velocity of A plus the velocity of B relative to A is if A is fixed. And I'm going to write that out. But essentially what you have here are absolute terms. Both those two terms are absolute, meaning relative to an, a, a fixed inertial reference. And this is the relative term. And again, this is read the following way. And I'm going to uh, pause here a second. OK, again, what this, this second term here. And I like this particular notation. There's lots of notations in textbooks. But I like this one because you've got BA, B slash A. So what that says is, again, is the velocity of B relative to A as if A were fixed. It's not fixed. Uh, but what that saying is is that we're going to pull our finger at A. What can B do? Well, it will go around in a circle. Okay. Well, you could write this, down, this equation down uh, the other way. 
So again, to save uh, YouTube time, again, what we would write then down, it doesn't matter which order, it really, it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Uh, the velocity of A equals the velocity of B, again, those are the two absolute terms. And then our relative term VA slash B, uh, which again says it's the velocity of A relative to B as if B were fixed. And what you're really talking about then in these particular two terms is that if you're holding one of the points fixed and the other one uh, can move, it can only move in a circle. So what you really need to do is talk about motion in a circle. And that's what we're going to do on the next page is talk about, well, what does that mean? Okay? And that's how we're going to evaluate those two relative terms. Okay, again, to save YouTube time, I've gone and drawn a, uh, a disk, a wheel that's rotating about its uh, center axis. It's got a radius of r, some point p on the rim. Well, the velocity of p is perpendicular to a line connecting the center uh, to the outside. It's perpendicular. And so what we would have is, uh, from our other particle kinematics, what we have is this is r omega is the value for it in the direction of whatever geometry that you have uh, relative to some uh, coordinate system. Uh, the omega, of course, is the angular velocity. And it needs to be in radians per second, as we've talked about in other uh, instructional companions. Okay? And the velocity is always tangent to the path, no matter whether you're in a circle or not. But there's the, there's the velocity part. Again, to save YouTube time, we talk about acceleration. We're not going to use this much, but I felt like we needed to cover it. Um, the uh, point P, again, going around in a circle, has now two accelerations. Uh, one that's tangent, uh, A sub P, and I with a superscript N. And then A sub P with a superscript, uh, well, this one is T, and this is N, T for tangent. And those two are A. Uh, tangent is r alpha, alpha being the angular acceleration uh, in radians per second squared. And our other term, a sub p n, is r omega squared. And that term, or that uh, acceleration, is towards the center of rotation. And this gives rise to, in general, sort of motion uh, to the uh, path variable um, term. So the n here is for normal, perpendicular, and the t is for tangent. But again, we're not going to, if you get a problem that needs the acceleration, I think you're going to want to put b. But velocity, nope, we need to do that. OK, well, let's look at these two terms, uh, the, the rel relative term. The first one, the velocity of b relative to a. Here I've just drawn a, a rigid body as just a, a member uh, with a length uh, a, b. And so what we're saying is the velocity of b uh, is equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity B relative to A as if A is fixed. Well, if A is fixed, then B can only go around in a circle. Uh, velocity of B relative to A has got to be perpendicular to that. And in fact, from our motion in a circle, what that comes out to be is the velocity of B relative to A. Of course, it has some components relative to a system, is equal to AB times the omega AB. And I've shown that in the clockwise fashion. But if you don't happen to know it, you show it in some direction. And when you solve the problem and it's the other way around, then you just know uh, you've got it backwards to start with. Don't agonize over that. Okay? Well, that's velocity of B relative to A. What about velocity of A relative to B? Okay, again, I drew the picture to save YouTube time. Well, again, it's the same member, uh, A and B. Uh, the omega is still in the clockwise. This was clockwise. That's clockwise. But now uh, we have the, this term would appear in the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of A relative to B as if B is fixed. Well, if I fix uh, B, then A can only move in a circle. So for the velocity of A relative to B, you end up with, again, AB times omega AB, the same, the same thing, except its direction in an xy coordinate system. Uh, this is right and down. This is going to be left and up. Okay? It just depends on which equation. So essentially what you have here is, again, motion in a circle. This is essentially velocity equals r omega. Okay? You can see why we did that. 
Well, what are some of the applications for this uh, principles that we've just come up with? Well, one is what's referred to as slider rods. That's at least what the, uh, the MERM calls them. Uh, one of the last sections uh, goes over how you would uh, solve those, doesn't actually put some numbers in, and actually does it by what's called the instantaneous center. But to me, that's uh, graphically intensive. So uh, another uh, instructional companion will be uh, to do that, uh, that particular problem, because it is also one of the sample examples problems in the uh, NCES mechanical PM, so PM exam. So uh, we'll certainly do that here uh, shortly. So that's one of the applications. Uh, essentially what that means is the rod, the actual rigid body, is the member AB. And uh, one, one end of it is confined to move uh, vertically. The other one is confined to move horizontally. You could have some other, other directions, but that would just complicate things. And so yes, those are, are very good problems, and you need to know how to work those. And of course, the classic uh, rolling wheels. We had that one uh, earlier in our little show and tell, uh, where you're rolling along, and we're going to have some instructional companions on on that. Uh, that uh, certainly is important, and also connect in with kinetics on that. And of course, mechanisms, but those are definitely uh, not low-hanging fruit. Uh, again, the MERM has some discussions on it uh, at the very last on the slider crank. That's the the mechanism for your internal combustion engine uh, piston cylinder. Uh, four bars, what's probably inside the door of your car to, to raise the window up nicely. Uh, quick return is a famous. So these are, these are sort of in a classic uh, dynamics of machines. I taught that for years and years and years. These are the famous three that we uh, go over, but uh, uh, th none of those are easy. Even the velocity, and of course, to do the acceleration, I would put B. I, I could do it one arm tied behind my back, but not, not in six minutes. So, um, but we could talk about some of those pieces here. But there's lots of other types of mechanisms that we uh, put forth here. So what I want to leave you with is the equation that's going to get us uh, everything that we need in these kinds of rigid body kinematics is going to be looking at uh, two points on the same rigid body where we one of the other, it doesn't matter the order, the velocity of B is the velocity of A plus the velocity of B relative to A. It's a vector equation, but uh, we are going to use our standard um, coordinate system over here and we'll end up with a uh, X and Y equation, and we'll have two equations to find two unknowns. So that's where we are. So we have is two scalar equations for two unknowns, and that's it.